Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Manatee County Candidate Forum. I'm Alice Nolan, the president of the League of Women Voters of Manatee County. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan public policy organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. The League has both women and men. The League does not support or oppose any candidate or party. Uh, before we start the program, uh, we'd like to highlight that the League of Women, the League of Women Voters, Voters Guide, vote411.org. Um, it is a nationwide effort. Uh, so anyone anywhere in the country can go to vote411.org and get voting information and get personalized candidate comparison uh, of candidates who are seeking their vote. The information will be available pretty soon, like a, about a week. Uh, and the candidates, uh, if you've not completed it yet, uh, please complete the questionnaire. Uh, we also have printed guides um, that are in Manatee County libraries, government buildings, and community centers, although that would be for the general election. Um, We're pleased to have the candidates for Manatee School Board District 4 with us today, Chad Choate and Sean Conway. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement and one minute to answer questions. Mary Collins, We'll hold up this sign when the time is complete. Finish your sentence and we will move on to the other candidate. We will alternate which candidate goes first in answering the question. We ask all candidates to speak only for themselves and not provide insight into their opponent's positions. There will be no rebuttals. This presentation is being recorded and will be posted on the League of Women Voters Man uh, of Manatee County website. That's lwbmanatee.org. Uh, and the top bar will have uh, a, a candidate videos. Um, and to YouTube, uh, the League of Women Voters of Manatee County YouTube. Reference can be made to it, uh, link, you can link to it, uh, but it must be able to be shown in its entirety. And it is the property of the League of Women Voters and cannot be used without written permission from the League of Women Voters of Manatee County. Uh, we will be taking questions from the candidates, so uh, for the candidates from you, so please, Put your questions in chat. Ruth Haranchar, our vice president, will be monitoring chat and present the chat questions to the candidates. Chat is only for questions for the candidates. Please, no comments or side conversations. It is distracting to those attempting to listen to the candidates. Um, shall we get <clears throat> started with opening statements? Um, We'll start with our two minute opening statement and we'll start with Chad Cho. Thanks, Alice, and thanks, thank you to, uh, for hosting this and all the League of Women Voters out there. Thanks for joining us. I uh, appreciate you, you coming out. So uh, my name is Chad Choate, born and raised here in Brainton, multi-generation. Um, my background uh, was a teacher for 10 to 12 years as well as a football coach. And now I'm a financial advisor uh, with Edward Jones. Uh, married with two kids, uh, both of whom in the district, 17 and, and 15. And I was appointed to the uh, school board in 2021, last year, August, uh, by Governor DeSantis. Um, I'm running and my platform is uh, pretty simple. My goal is to make the county the best uh, school district in the state of Florida. And uh, I plan on doing that by protecting parental rights, keeping security in schools a priority, providing the best technical and vocational programs that we can, supporting our teachers through salary and through excellent training, 
And I believe we can do all that and achieve all that uh, while being fiscally responsible, responsible and transparent. So I appreciate your time and look forward to uh, the forum. Candidate Conley, your two minutes. Yes, thanks for having us. Um, I just want to say that uh, I appreciate you inviting me to this. Um, Basically, I decided to run for uh, county school board after the shootings in Texas. I'm a secur security expert and uh, force protection expert. I have a background in uh, military intelligence, and I think these skills would help me increase the security and safety of the children within Nancy County, as well as be an example throughout Florida if I was uh, given the opportunity to be the school board uh, district four. Um, I also think that uh, I have the uh, intelligence, um, uh, deep dive capabilities and skills that allow me to do proper oversight uh, and to be able to look for uh, um, opportunities where we can make efficiencies and sure that the, the taxpayer's money is used properly. Uh, I'm a firm believer uh, that you always must be diligent and look for waste, fraud and abuse type situations uh, to ensure that we're using our money wisely. But I also believe in investing in our people because our people is what really count when it comes to any type of uh, activity. So investing in the, the skills and the, the teachers and administrators uh, to make sure that we have quality uh, where it counts and that our students are getting the most of what they can for, for what they uh, get when they go to school. Um, I think that the taxpayers could uh, use me. I'm, I'm not the average uh, candidate. I understand that. Um, my background in teaching is extremely limited. I did substitute teach while I was going to college. Uh, I had plans to be a teacher. I wanted to teach at the college level, um, but I thought I should serve my nation first. And then 9-11 happened and I ended up having a career uh, outside of the school area. But that's where my interest is. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, and candidate Conley, uh, what ha have you done to prepare yourself to be an effective board member? So far, what I've been doing is I've been watching old board meetings. Uh, I've been going online and looking at some of the uh, school board uh, issues. I'm also uh, just doing basic research on uh, what the issues are with the civilian population. So I've been pulling a lot of information off the internet and uh, just reviewing it. I haven't done a deep dive on it yet. Uh, I'm pretty much trying to figure out what was the current focus of the general public. And with that, I, I plan on doing a deep dive into those areas and then um, hopefully coming up with some type of uh, thought process of how to best um, take, take these uh, issues in hand and express them to the voters. And candidate Cho. Thanks. Um, obviously in the, the preparation uh, for the past year and, and four months, five months uh, that I've been on the board or will be up until, until November when my term is done for replacing Dr. Hopes. Uh, the preparation is being, a, of course, being a part of it and learning. I do believe that when you get onto to board, especially with this kind of uh, a robust um, uh, budget and functionality that there's a learning curve. So I believe that that, that learning curve to me was has been completed uh, by already being on the board. Prior to me being on the board, I think that the preparation uh, to become uh, a, a school board member and sit on the board uh, is back from my knowledge of being a teacher, being in the classroom, understanding what's expected of a teacher uh, to educate our children. Um, I believe that uh, having kids of my own currently in the school system, knowing what they're going through and what they've been through in a, in a really close proximity of time, um, and, and also having cousins, et cetera, in it as well. Thank you. And that was a quick I, minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to good. another question right away, <laughs> so you'll, you'll have some time on that one. Um, what would you do as a school board member to address the need to attract and retain employees and especially teachers? 
We're starting with me, correct? Because he started. You last. are, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure. So I think that uh, we have to have an environment uh, that they want to be in that is uh, attractive to them. And I think that that environment is is multiple things. Number one, they got to be able to live uh, on a wage, and so making sure that we're compensating them for their great works that they do. Uh, with our students uh, to make sure that our, our school system, our school buildings, our technology, we invest in those to make sure we have top-notch innovative things that they can come in and use uh, to their abilities. Training, I think training, making sure that we use the best tools we possibly can uh, to train them on what their job specific uh, is going to be. Um, and I think we can attract and, and keep the talented teachers we have and, and even get more talented as we move forward. And candidate Connolly, what would you do to attract so I, to keep teachers? So I believe that the environment is a key aspect. Uh, when somebody takes a job, uh, the first thing they do look at is the, the fiscal aspect. So once they overcome that hurdle, uh, they then start to, to the environment that they're working in. So it is a key aspect to make sure that that environment is something that is conducive to education and to teaching, uh, as well as there needs to be a team synergy that makes them feel part of the, that they're a part of the whole of the school. Um, and then with performance, uh, of course, there should be opportunities for um, fiscal and uh, within house um, advancements, because that also helps a person stay engaged. The more activities that we can provide the teachers and administrators to be engaged and be uh, a contributor to the success of Manatee County Schools, the better off we will be and the higher the retention will be and the more likely we are to attract them to the Manatee County. Thank you. Um, and candidate Conley, effective communication with parents and the community is essential. What will you, as a school board member, do to ensure that the work of the school board is easily accessible and transparent? So transparency and communications, uh, I've, I've dealt with that significantly in my career. Uh, it's a key aspect of what we, we do. Um, there's a variety of ways you can do that, especially uh, in today's technology, there's plenty of communication communication avenues that we can have that go beyond email. So we need to ensure that the school board has numerous uh, inroads for communication as well as outroads to the citizens to be able to communicate. Um, there, there needs to be a way that they ensure that they're, they're heard. Uh, and, and I'm not positive uh, how that's set up right now because I'm not a school board member. Uh, when it when it comes to the uh, other aspects of uh, uh, communication, there's nothing like a face-to-face -face discussion with people. And we should always be open and welcome to have those conversations with the uh, voters and, and ensure that we're representing them properly. Thank you, and candidate Cho. So communication is key, especially from the district standpoint to the public. And I think the number one communication to be should be to parents. And uh, the goal should be now that we've moved past COVID and restrictions on coming back into the schools, the goal should be to get parents and the community back into schools, get our parents back into the classroom to help and to volunteer, uh, get our citizens that are fortunate enough, maybe they're retired or have some extra time on their hands get them back into the school, help in some of the, the ways that, that we could use their help with reading to kids, et cetera. So I think that's the biggest, uh, one of the biggest hurdles that we dealt with during COVID was uh, not, not being able to get people back in the classroom and really experiencing what's going on. So I think that's imperative. Of course, we already do the emails. Uh, we do, you know, Twitter, Facebook, uh, robocalls. Um, and actually, if you're, if you're on those robocalls, you have kids in schools, there's tons of them and sometimes uh, maybe too much, but we'll leave that uh, for another discussion. But uh, so I think it's important to, the, the, to communicate as many avenues as we possibly can. Thank you. And this is going to be your question again, uh, mm -hmm. candidate Choate, and it's a long one. So um, 
The diverse student population of the Manatee School District reflects the community's population. Based upon the 2021 data from the Florida Department of Education, over half of the Manatee School District students live at the poverty level. Among the overall student population, 56% of the children are children of color, 44% are white. In addition, almost 20% of the students in Manatee County's public schools are English language learners. With a population this diverse in our public schools, what will you as a school board member do to ensure that everyone's children successfully engage in a rigorous and relevant education? Thanks, yeah, that was a long one. But um, I think it's pretty simple. At the root of education, in, in my personal opinion, uh, it doesn't matter what race, creed, nationality you are, we should be providing the best education that we possibly can. We should be attracting the best teachers, bringing in the best programs, partnering, partnering with the community uh, to be able to provide the best education possible. And, and while doing that, uh, we also need to make sure that we're looking inward and saying, are we, are we doing that and evaluating uh, what schools may need some more help with, uh, with programs and what, what students may need some more help with programs uh, and make sure that we uh, get them that help and accomplish that. Thank you and candidate Conley. So uh, I have a background in uh, not just history and anthropology, uh, and, um, and intelligence. So I believe that the ethnic diversity is an important aspect of this county and that to help people and students be engaged, you basically got to talk to them about their ethnic background. Um, as somebody that has a uh, Creek Indian uh, in their blood growing up, the stories that my grandmother would tell me uh, how she was raised in Pensacola was her uh, Indian grandmother were, were significant to me. So I think that there's ways to, to bring these ethnic uh, diversities into the classroom to get students well engaged in what's going on and make them understand their culture as well as their history in a, in a better form. And that will, will help them learn and interact at a, at a higher level. Okay, candidate Conley. What do you see as the greatest challenge for Manatee's public schools and why? As a board mom, member, how would you meet those, that challenge? I think the greatest challenge is, why, is why, right why I'm running. It's the, the fact that the, the school are no longer a safe environment and they need to be. S students need to feel safe within the building and there needs to be, I think, a uh, different type of review of what's going on to protect our schools. I think that I have the capabilities to do that. I've done vulnerability assessments, and I think I can lend uh, in a unique way to increase and improve the security within Mantee County. Uh, after we get to where I think that that's a, a, a sound area, then I'm all for um, basically ensuring that the, the STEM type of education classes are, are there. Uh, science, technology, math um, throughout the United States is on a decline and we need to make sure that Manatee County is the leading edge of that. And there's plenty of innovative ways to do that. And I know that there are already some that they're uh, exploring, but I think that because of my background, I, I could assist in that. Okay, and candidate Cho. Can you, can uh, you just repeat that question one more time? Sure, yeah. What do you see as the greatest challenge for Manatee's public schools and why? And as a board member, how will you help meet this challenge? So I think that number one, uh, from an uh, education, from an academic standpoint, I think that uh, reading is no question uh, where we lack in the scores and, and the proficiency that we want. And I think the biggest thing we can do uh, is to look and, and be critical about what we're providing and uh, do we need to change the techniques, the programs, uh, add support to the classrooms to make sure that the reading levels go up. And I believe that, that that's academically the number one challenge. I think number two, 
uh, challenge that, that I think in the, in the school system that we face is security uh, and making sure our schools are secure. We do a great job. Uh, our head of security, Paul D'Amico, does a great job uh, and has really gotten this uh, county fortified. And, and also the state did too um, after uh, the shootings down in, in South Florida. So um, I believe that those two things are the biggest uh, uh, and most important. Thank you. Okay, candidate showed again. Uh, the voters of Manatee County have twice passed a referendum to increase funding for Manatee schools, as have school districts that surround us. Why do you think this has been necessary? And if you feel it's not necessary, what could the school board do to afford the needed services without taxing citizens? So uh, I know Sarasota County's had it for 20 plus years, I believe. And, and when we passed it back in 2018, uh, when you look at the numbers, the, the support from the state ha has declined and, and the way that, that uh, we are able to get our funding has declined. And so I think some of it was to, to bridge that gap. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not ways that we can save money uh, and, and do some things in the budget to save money. I will tell you that I do not believe that that any part of teachers compensation should be in that mill. Um, and I believe that we need to work hard to move that portion out of the mill uh, moving forward. And uh, that's something that that I know we've we've talked about uh, in, in situations and I know other people other board members agree and, and that's something that I'm going to push uh, as we move forward. And candidate Conley. So I believe that um, they made those uh, changes basically to keep up with the cost of everything. Everything is going up in, in cost. Uh, so some of that was definitely necessary. However, that doesn't mean that we can't be efficient, that we can't do more with less. And we need to review and look at the budget critically and find those areas. You know, however, teachers and uh, administrators need to be secure in their jobs. So it's not something that you should uh, necessarily be doing a deep dive to look at where you can cut your manpower. You should keep your manpower probably where it's at and look more towards how the uh, infrastructure is set up and where the weaker parts of that could be um, more efficient. The real aspect is that with any type of bureaucracy, you're going to find certain areas that could be better. Uh, and I think that I've, I've done this in my career in the military uh, where I've been in charge and I've looked at budgets. I think I could help in this. Thank you. Um, Ruth, uh, can you mute, unmute yourself? Let's take a couple of questions for chat and then we'll go back to our questions. Okay. Um, one question from chat is um, that in addition to active shooter drills, our classrooms are becoming a uh, battleground for the raging culture wars. What can school board members do to be sure that critical thinking skills continue to be taught in all of our classrooms? This, this would start with candidate Conley. Do you want it repeated? So, no, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Um, so I basically believe that uh, these critical skills and everything have a lot to do with en engagement. When a student feels engaged in something, when they feel uh, a, a affiliation with it, that they're, they're going to get deeper involved in it. Um, and I think that we need to look for more innov innovative uh, ways to get them uh, interested in the subject matter. Um, and one of the school board things that I watched recently, they uh, partnered with Guy Harvey Foundation, and they're doing something really amazing out on Anna Maria uh, Elementary School. Those type of things are what we need. We just need more of it. And we need it focused not just on the um, outer islands and, uh, you know, the beauty with our oceans, of course, but there's other areas that we can do improvements with within the inner uh, city aspects that would get people involved, that would students involved and make them more interested in what they're doing. Candidate Cho, would you like the question repeated? Um, no, I think I, I think I got it. So 
as far as the cultural wars go, I believe that, that we should be focusing on education and not indoctrinating in any way, any, any side of the culture war that you want to be on. We should be worrying about education, reading, math, arithmetic, technical, vocational skills. Um, but as far as, as our critical thinking skills go, uh, we need to make sure we have that curriculum in place that challenges critical thinking. And I think we can do that uh, without stepping into the, the cultural wars uh, with the curriculum that's out there that the state allows us to use. Okay, and Bruce, one for candidate Cho. Uh, the candidates have touched on an important quality of school board members is the ability to listen and work well with others. The question is, what evidence can a candidate point to to illustrate their ability, illustrate their ability to collaborate, communicate, and cooperate? And I'm starting this one off. Am I on mute? Nope. So um, I think in the in the past year that I've been on the board, almost a year that I've been on the board, I think that I've shown my ability to collaborate um, and uh, communicate. Um, and I think the last C was cooperate with uh, the other school board members. I think that we uh, have shown that we can agree and we can disagree, um, but it's not gonna be some spectacle um, and, and, and some kind of uh, show. And um, I would say in, in other aspects of my life, uh, being a part of, of the community event, the, the, the organizations I'm a part of and the boards that I sit on, Kiwanis, Leadership Manatee Alumni Association, being a part of the Manatee Chamber, I think that that shows um, me wanting to to uh, interact and cooperate with others to make sure our county is uh, is the best county can be. Candidate Conley. So my background, uh, of course, is in the military on this one. I, I'd say the highest level uh, where I've demonstrated this was at the joint staff, uh, working with men, working with the combatant commands. On a regular basis, I had to communicate with uh, United States Central Command, United States uh, Southern Command, uh, United States Indo-PACOM. Uh, so I'm pretty well versed in working uh, in the higher echelons uh, within the uh, Pentagon as well as uh, with the combatant commands. But I've also done this throughout my career in the military, um, working as a battle watch captain at Fourth Fleet and working with components. So I've demonstrated this skill over and over again. And I don't think that I'd have any problem adapting to the uh, the Manatee County standards of communication and cooperation. Okay, candidate Conlon. In 2019, Senate Bill 7030 passed, which gives school districts the option to arm teachers as well as security guards. Teachers are now allowed to carry guns via a guardian program. Uh, do you feel Manatee teachers should participate in this program and be armed at school? So I answered something similar to this uh, the other day. Basically, I believe that there's certain training that you'd have to be uh, have before you should be armed within uh, a, a facility like a school. I don't think that teachers should go in there armed without proper training, without proper authorization. Uh, if for some reason we decided to do something along that line, I would probably take the military model where you would have an armory and you would have designated people that go through an extensive training process and then would get deputized. So they would probably be deputized and be working under the resource officer. And then that resource officer would be the one in command. But that would have to be something that we would review and look at. But under the current standards, I know I do not believe that teachers should be bringing weapons into the school. They are not properly trained and they are not ready to combat somebody that comes through that door with a weapon looking to harm them or anybody else. Uh, thank you, candidate Cho. So here's a great question. And this is something that's been bounced around for obviously several years. Um, and, uh, you know, I do believe that um, we have the right to be protected. I do believe that uh, it would have to be extensive training. Uh, I think if we ever did anything like that, it would have to be uh, starting with ex-military, ex-police officers, um, and, and the extensive training that they would have to go through with the SROs uh, to make sure that that communication is, is properly there in case 
uh, something were to happen. Um, but if it came up, I, I would be willing to listen and, and see where that conversation went. Okay, candidate Cho. Struggling readers have been the focus of the school district for many years. What do you believe can be done so that all teachers, no matter their subject matter, can support literacy pre-K through 12? So um, just touching real quickly on, on the reading, I think that it begins at a young age and it begins at home uh, and it begins before you get to school. So I think we need to engage and make sure we're doing the best we possibly can to engage parents to begin reading to their kids and getting books in their hands. Uh, partnering with the Early Learning Coalition and things like that, making sure that that there's accessibility to, to the VPK programs that our own school provides. Those numbers show that that our that numbers are higher when they are in VPK from the district rather than private. And so I think we need to make sure that we offer that to them and then and make sure across the board, there's absolutely reading. Um, I was a math teacher uh, and making sure that, that word problems were done um, and we made sure that, that we went over those and, and we taught those and that uh, the students were able to hopefully grasp those word problems. Um, those are ways that you can go across the curriculum though uh, to make sure reading is done in every subject. Thank you and uh, candidate Conley. Uh, like Chad, I do also believe that this, the um, making sure that the other subjects are properly utilizing the uh, reading and writing aspects that are required within those classes is a key aspect to it. But like I mentioned earlier, it's it's getting the, the reader, getting the student uh, have that desire to read what's what's there. And it's all about engagement. You know, from my experience uh, as a child, as well as my experience raising kids and grandkids, that when you give them something that they want to read, they read much better. When you give them something that they want to write, they write much better. So finding these inroads, especially with uh, different ethnic groups, is a key aspect to increasing these capabilities. And there's plenty of ways to do it. Uh, until I do a deep dive on the curriculum, I can't identify the weak points, but there must be there. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having these problems to begin with. So that's how I'd do it. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to Ruth now. And how about three questions from chat? So we will be starting. Okay. <clears throat> First question from chat, um, or the next question from chat. Um, what was your position on wearing masks in schools, and what should we do when future viruses attack our our schools and students? It's a uh, candidate Conley. Oh, sorry, you said <laughs> chat earlier, so. Uh, my position on the mask is, uh, to me, it's very simple. I was, I'm for masks. Uh, if that's what the, uh, doctors say is the wisest choice. Um, we have to wear shoes when we go inside for, we don't get foot fungus wearing a mask where you don't transmit something that's airborne just makes common sense. When we have football players on the field, we put helmets on them. So why not put a mask on a kid? It's really not that hard. I don't see what the big deal was about it. Now you can say uh, the rights of everybody, but it's also the rights that could somebody get, be infected. Um, with future uh, pandemic type of situation, it matters what type of pandemic it is. So this one is a highly transmittable airborne uh, pathogens. If it's something, as we've heard in the news, like uh, monkeypox, it's a totally different situation. So you gotta take it by a case by case basis. But all the evidence shows that uh, mask wearing uh, was helpful. Thank you. Uh, and candidate Cho. Oh, uh, my stance uh, from day one was that the masks should be uh, a choice from the parents. If they feel like they should mask their children, uh, then they, they could or couldn't have uh, based on what their choice was. And um, the uh, second part of that question which was uh, future, future, anything future happening. I, mean, I think I take it step by step, but in the ultimate, my ultimate uh, opinion is uh, the government um, shouldn't be telling me that, that I need to wear a mask or not wear a mask or my children wear a mask. Uh, I, as a parent, should be able to tell them to wear it or not. 
Thank you. And uh, Ruth for candidate Cho. How would you help to support LGBTQ plus youth in Manatee schools? So good question. Uh, um, ultimately, I think we need to be helping all children in sports. I think that me, my past of playing football, coaching football, um, I think sports, you learn a lot about life and a lot about the way you should be uh, working with others in a sports team environment. And um, so I think that, that we should be helping that community just as much uh, as we should be helping any other community. Candidate Conley. You're mute. Can I hear the question again? His answer can, made me think that I might've heard it wrong. So could I hear it again, please? Um, how, oops, let me make sure I'm, I'm muted. I, I am, okay, I'm sorry. How would you help to support LGBTQ plus youth in Manatee schools? So um, basically it's, it's teaching tolerance uh, with kids. Um, so it doesn't matter if they're playing sports or not. Uh, you basically have to make students understand that people are different and that there are uh, individuals that are not what what you might be and so you just gotta have tolerance for them and everybody else and understand you know that everybody's going through difficult times and as a student that you need to to basically uh treat people like you would like to be treated it's you know the the basic tenets that we all grew up with so we just got to reinforce that type of stuff Okay, Ruth, one more for candidate Conley. How will you, if elected, work to ensure the workforce of the district is reflective of student population? So um, that goes with the hiring process. Um, basically, when you're hiring, you, you got to make sure that you're inclusive to all ethnic groups. Uh, you should give everybody an opportunity. There is times when there there is no candidates of the other ethnic diversity, uh, and then you have to make a choice. Um, but that's where the transparency comes involved. You you need to make sure that the citizens understand that you're you're trying to ensure that the ethnic groups are representative uh, within the administrative and teaching population. But if there's no other candidates that step forward, your hands are tied. That transparency is the key uh, in this situation. Um, and um, candidate Cho. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously you, you referenced uh, Forty-four percent of our, our population is white, and and the rest is um, is not white. And so, um, how do we how do we make sure that we get more? Um, I think I don't know if it was diverse, but if it was reflective of student population, I think we got to make sure we go and recruit those types of, of talent. I don't think that uh, we should be looking at hiring teachers based on what's the color of their skin. We should be hiring them. Are they, are they a quality candidate to fulfill this role? That doesn't mean we can't go out and make sure we're recruiting everywhere and anywhere, um, the right universities, every university. Um, and so I believe that, that we should be doing that and we should be trying to attract any and all talent that we possibly can, no matter what their skin color is or who what their background is. Thank you. Okay, now this is for candidate Choate. Um, how would you describe what success looks like for the school district? So I think that um, obviously there's a portion of success based on, on testing um, and, and there's got to be some kind of parameter with that. Uh, I do not believe that's all of it though. Uh, I believe that uh, are we uh, producing uh, future citizens into our community that are engaging in the community, that are helping the community, um, and that are good just civilians 
uh, in, in our area. And I think that if, uh, if we see that, that we're doing that and we're fulfilling that, um, are we fulfilling a workforce need that's out there? Do we have programs in place to be able to uh, make sure that, that we're helping our businesses out there in the local community with, with good staffing people? And, and that's, that should be, to be me, number one is we should be preparing the students for life and, uh, and making sure that they're good citizens. And candidate Conley. So that's a difficult metric to cap capture within just the test. So like Chad was saying, there is certain life skills that uh, students need to learn before they move on. There's a variety of ways to capture that data. Um, we just need the proper tools to assist us in learning uh, what's the difference between the successful student leaving uh, high school and a non-successful one. And by doing this circular type of uh, analysis of the problem set, we can get closer to finding solutions. I think probably uh, an aspect that isn't there is, is that type of uh, big data, um, database type of mentality that allows you to identify uh, the success and failures within that student body that actually leaves. So those are metrics that we could capture and we could assist us in our uh, future planning. Okay, candidate Conley. Affordable housing has become a major stumbling block locally for attracting and retaining um, teachers and staff. Uh, what role, if any, do you feel the school sh board should uh, play in this? So the, the housing aspects in Mantee County have definitely shot up in an amazing way that has put a significant amount of the citizens of this county in hardship. Uh, any teachers that are going to come here, they're going to look at the cost of living. Um, and cost of living increases should should be out there for the uh, students, I mean, for the uh, teachers, as well as the uh, administrators. We need to properly look at what it's costing um, now to live in Manatee County compared to in the past and then make the appropriate changes uh, to, to keep with the staff that we have. Because if we don't, we will lose people of quality. They will go someplace else. So we need to look critically at what the cost of living is and how we can assist the people that work for Manatee County Schools. Candidate Cho. So uh, this obviously topic has been talked about for quite some time, and especially with the city and the county, as well as on the school district side. I think the biggest thing we can do is, is help with our impact fees to encourage um, developers and builders to come in and, and produce attainable, affordable housing. Uh, I'd like to see us, and, and I think we've said this in, in board meetings, I'd like to see us match what the county does. So uh, it's not so confusing. It, it looks to me like they're going to do a, a tier base based on square footage. Uh, and I think that would be the way to go for the impact fees. Um, and, and that's that's the biggest way that we're going to be able to help overall uh, for affordable housing. Thank you. OK, Ruth, uh, do you have questions from chat? Yes. If elected, would you vote to change election of school board members at district level? If so, why? And this is for candidate Cho. Uh, so I'm assuming um, this was, this is based on the, the new, this year being the new uh, district only uh, voting um, for you to, to be elected. Um, I think that there's gotta be some accountability um, to the, to the uh, candidate. Um, and I don't, I wasn't there on the board when, when they initially passed this. Um, but my assumption would be that that's why they did this was to make sure that each district, um, you know, could really have accountability. Uh, I don't know if there was any problem with having the whole county vote for candidates because we do serve the entire county and, and kind of match what the, the commission did. Um, so I'd be for doing that. I don't know if there was ever a need to, to really change. And candidate Conley. So I was interpreting the question different. I thought it was about appointments 
uh, to an open position. And I think that when it comes to appointments to open positions, that the county should choose who represents them, not the state level. Um, but if that's not the question, uh, can I have it repeated? Because I, I'm not getting what uh, the difference is. Um, if elected, would you vote to change the election of school board members at district level? If so, why? And what that's referring to now is um, like you're a candidate for district four. Um, so right now the election of school board members is restricted um, to each specific district. I understand it now. I'm sorry I didn't catch that whole thing the first time. Uh, I have no problem with it being by district. Um, who better to, to represent you than somebody from your area? Uh, we're breaking it down into it. We should follow basically the the way the county commissioners are doing it. You have districts and you have at large. That way you still have a checks and balance type situation where you still uh, have people that are at large that represent the greater majority. And then you would have ones that were in the district. So I think that's a good model that the, the county commissioners always already have. So why not follow it? Okay, Bruce, a question for candidate Conley. We have a question that asks, uh, is asked with regard to students wearing uniforms. Um, does the district give parents the option to wear or not wear uniforms? So I'm not aware of what the district does as far as allows and not allow uniforms. As a former military guy, I definitely see the benefits of uniforms. Form. But uh, as somebody that was once a student in Manatee County, when they talked about uniforms, I was opposed to it. So there's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, and there's certain aspects that let uh, level the playing field for everybody, but also can put hardships on families that are really tight on cash, and then they have to come up with uh, having the right pair of pants and the right shirt and the the right belt and the right uh, shoes. So uh, I think that that one should still be uh, left for the, the parents and we should be open to that type of situation and maybe only have it in limited uh, aspects within our, our current setup. Thank you, candidate Cho. Uh, so the district as a whole doesn't require the uh, wearing of, of uniforms. It's, it's done by each school and it's voted on, uh, I believe by the parents of each school, they, they choose whether or not to be uh, in uniform or not. Um, certainly all schools are not uniformed. Um, my kids go to Maine High School and they're not. So, um, so the district doesn't require, make sure that happens. It happens at each school level uh, chooses uh, to do that, so. Okay, Ruth, do you have a question for candidate Cho? Yes, this is a follow-up question to uh, regarding um, district level elections of school board members. Do you believe being elected at the district level increases board collaboration and cooperation? Uh, that's a good question. So um, I, don't, I don't know if, if uh, increasing collaboration and cooperation makes a difference on if it's just voted on by district or by the county. Um, I believe it's by the individual, whoever's voted in and however they're voted in. Uh, some people are just gonna not be cooperative and, and collaborate with people and some are, are uh, you know, that's just not what they want to do or, or their personality. I don't know if um, just having district level votes or county level votes uh, as a whole um, makes a difference in the cooperation, the collaboration. I, I truly think it's about the candidate and who gets elected and, and are they willing to cooperate and collaborate with others? Candidate Conley. So I'm in the same uh, way that Chad's thinking. I don't, I don't think it matters if you're been voted in by a district. Um, 
about collaboration. I think it is the individuals that really count. Uh, some people are more focused on teamwork and focused on synergy. And uh, other people are, are looking for different type of um, future aspects of their life and are more about themselves, to be honest. And uh, it's up to the voters to see through those type of people and pick people that have the willingness to, to be teamwork. And uh, I think once you're sitting the board, you're all, you're all board members, one team, one fight. I, I think that that's what really counts. Okay, and Ruth uh, for candidate Chuck. You're there. You mute, Ruth. <laughs> I keep I keep muting um, because of the thunder here. Um, You, each candidate has um, commented on a number of things or suggestions, but a, the question that just came in is, what do we need to do differently? And that's candidate Conley, I believe. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was, uh, I should have been paying more attention. I was uh, thinking about the thunder in the background. So, um, there's plenty of ways that we can do stuff differently, but you, you, I think you have to do proper deep dive analysis and uh, find those critical areas that we need to improve. Um, and until you really look at the data, you're just doing you know wild guess on what is the best methodology. Uh, data driven analysis typically yields the best results as long as you're ensuring that you have good follow up uh, and follow good um, ORSA type principles on reviewing the, the information. I think we can get to where we needed if we're just given the opportunity to review that type of data. And candidate Cho. I think one of the things we need to be doing differently, and, and I believe this is, this is education across the board. Um, I think we need to be uh, as, a, as a, a goal and as a society that it's, it's uh, okay to go after other paths than just college that um, college is not always the answer. It's, it's uh, college, it's going to trade school, going to vocational school. Uh, we've got a great one here in this county, probably one of the best in the state, adding new programs all the time. Uh, so, so I wish that uh, education as a whole, uh, we were able to really evaluate uh, from an age, late middle school, early high school, what are you interested in? What do you, where, you, where do you see yourself in the path going? Uh, and maybe be able to uh, arrange those schedules and being able to make classes for that. Um, that's one thing I wish uh, education was done differently. Obviously, that's something that's a, a, a bigger level than what the board could do. Uh, but we could ask, we could advocate for that. Okay. Um, we don't have any more questions in chat. I'm kind of surprised that we did not the last too, I believe we did have uh, questions about critical race theory. So I'm going to Chad, throw out to you um, the position of um, the instruction of history and the, uh, and the impact of um, the controversy about critical race theory. So I think critical race theory, in my opinion, uh, should not be a K through 12 subject. It was uh, created many decades ago uh, in, in law schools to study uh, the, the uh, look of, of how race is affected with, with the law. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a theory that should, should stay um, in, in that realm uh, and that in the, the K through 12 and even pre-K now, what we should be saying pre-K through 12, you know, we should be, we should be really educating our students on, uh, you know, how to read, how to write, how to do math correctly um, in the history of our country. And candidate Conley. So I believe that critical race theory is a higher level type of application of critical theory. Critical theory is something that could be taught at the uh, high school level just like other theories to touch upon it and then allow the students to explore things when they get to the college level. 
at the lower academic levels, I just don't see that it's appropriate. We're not asking students to go deep diving into um, quantum theory. So why should we be asking them to go deep diving into critical uh, theories? So give them the building blocks and then let them uh, figure out what path they wanna go. Um, this did start out as a, a law um, aspect, but it has morphed into so many different ways. Critical theory is in many different fields and, and teaching them critical theory and then allowing them to see where it, it uh, is important in whatever field they choose to study in college, I think it's the proper way to go. Okay, thank you. And we're coming on to the end now. So on behalf of the League of Women Voters, thank you to our candidates Chode and Conley and all of you that have attended today. Uh, please uh, join us on Zoom on July, Thursday, July 14th at 5.30 for Taste of the League. Felicia Jett, voter, uh, our voter services co-chair uh, of Florida, uh, will explain many facets of the Florida State Voter Services Action Team and how they help us to be informed voters. And, uh, and I'll go back to saying, look at uh, the candidate forms on vote411.org and also the, this video and other candidate videos will be available on lwvmanatee.org and check the menu bar. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Good luck, Chad, out Thank here. You.